Hello everyone, welcome back to episode 9 of our FTV Skies Expert Mode Let's Play. So guys, we have a, a decent amount of stuff on our plan. First of all, we have to pick up the sugar because it's getting a bit out of hand and I don't have the storage to keep it in the chest over there apparently. But on today's episode, I really want to go ahead and get into pneumatic craft. Now this will allow us to advance machinery and also get a better diesel situation going on because currently we're using not the best production, right? So if I look up ethanol, right? There's a much better way to make ethanol using mendosteens. You get 200 millibuckets per mendosteen compared to what we're using now where we're getting 100 millibuckets for water, sugar, and spider eyes. And all of the stuff here for ethanol is completely renewable with guarding cloches. So we're going to go ahead and set this up hopefully today. And this requires a lot of pneumatic craft as well as some machine frames, which we'll use the mechanical crafters from last episode. However, to get started with pneumatic craft, we need to get ourselves a pressure chamber. Now to get pressure chamber, you need reinforced stone. And reinforced stone is used in the enchanting apparatus and requires 5,000 source, which is quite a lot. However, we, we've moved our arcane pedestals and our enchanting core over towards where our source is, so we don't have to continuously move back and forth and fill up the source each time. So I figured this would be easier. So I'm gonna go ahead and make 32 stacks, well not 32 stacks, uh, it should be eight stacks of reinforced blocks. And this will hopefully get us pretty far in. Is that the wrong recipe? Sort of sheet, other stone, deep slate. Oh, I put andesite in there. Whoops. So I meant to put other stone in. Other stone is andesite. However, this andesite after thrown into a spirit fire. And I lit this spirit fire just for this purpose. And I completely forgot. <laughs> So yeah, it's other stone and andesite. Sorry, other stone and deep slate. And we got deep slate from, I believe, the villages. This really doesn't want to separate. There we go. We got deep slate from the villages, but you can get deep slate and we will get deep slate from a material generator down the line. I think that is a much better way of getting it proficiently, but this should be the recipe. It is deep slate and other stone. So I'm not entirely sure why it doesn't want to work. So there's something on the pedestals I'm missing. Other stone, all the way around, and deep slate. Oh, there's no deep slate in this guy here, is there? Where did we accidentally put a full stack? Okay. Alright, all salt. <laughs> I made a few mistakes there. However, I'm just going to sit here and collect all of the reinforced bricks, or reinforced stone, sorry, and that should give us plenty enough to get us started with pneumatic craft. Okay, and we're done. And as you see there, I had my enchanting apparatus time pouch which is our temporal pouch here and you just shift right click any block i set it to eight times the speed and we got ourselves four sacks of reinforced stone so just before we get started i'm going to go ahead and claim all of the quests that we completed in the past few episodes which will be a lot i assume yeah that's quite a few things i haven't been claiming these quests in a while we got some pedestals oh we got a mana splitter for free by making a mana pool i should have realized a mana Manus here monocle. There's so many things I'll have to go over. Plenty of cool things. All probably very useful. <laughs> However, we don't need them at the moment. What's that? Oh, it's just stone. Okay. So what we want to do is we're going to jump right into making pressure wall chambers. And that is made with this reinforced bricks themselves. And we'll grab two stacks of bricks. Should be fine. And the quest wants us to grab 90, I believe. Oh, we'll click welcome to chapter two first. That's even more quest stuff. But yeah, this wants it wants 91 of these guys here. So we'll make that. And then we want pressure chamber glass. We'll take 16. We want pressure chamber valves. We'll take the four. And then we need two interfaces, which means we need a hopper. And that's our valve. Now we also want some pressure tubes, which is just sturdy sheets and glass. Later down, we'll have compressed iron plates, which are, will be a lot easier to make. However, we don't have that option at the moment. So we'll grab ourselves 32 pressure tubes and we need ourselves a rotational compressor. Now this is what will actually generate a uh, rotational force. Oh, sorry, it'll generate pressure with rotational force. So we need ourselves one of these as well. And we will also want an air gate tube module or what are they called? One sec. We'll want ourselves a safety tube module, sorry. And this will just make sure we release pressure. That So we release pressure if we get above five bars. Otherwise, our pipes will explode at this rate level. Because if you hold shift while looking over pressure tube, the one we just built, 
it says max pressure five bars. So that, were, that means as soon as your pressure goes over five bars, your pipes will start to explode and burst because they just can't hold all the pressure in anymore. Okay, to start ourselves off in Pneumaticraft, we want to go ahead and build ourselves a 5x5 five five pressure chamber. Now, you don't actually have to build a 5x5, five five. you can build a 3x3, three three, you can build the 4x4. Four four. However, we're going to go ahead and build the 5x5x5. Five by five by five. The quest book is right here. It doesn't really show you exactly how to build it. However, the schematic cannon might have an example, but they're pretty standard and pretty simple to build. So, we're going to go ahead and do a 5x5, five five five, like so. And it gives, like, the quest requires you to have enough blocks. So we'll go up and over like this. We'll do glass on the front, like, here. Oh, we ran out of flight. We really do need to extend the range on that guy. And by extend the range, I mean place more flight pedestals around our base. And get relays hooked up to them because we do want flight consistently. Running out like that isn't the best. And you need an input and an output on these guys. So items need to go in one side and come out the other. So you see one is blue, one is orange. And orange is output, so that'll be the input to the pressure chamber. On this side, this is your input, and that'll be orange on the outside, which is visualized here. So orange items go out, blue items go in. So items will come out this side and go in this side and they'll come out of the inside there and go inside that way, if that makes sense. So blue is input, orange is output, and you can always, if you ever forget, it, like I said, it shows right there. And the last piece of our puzzle is we want to place a pressure chamber valve on the back like this, and that will form our multi-block. And now you can click this wherever you want, by the way, and if you click on the interfaces here, you can see whether you want to export crafted or all items, and so on and so forth. We'll go into more detail on that later. However, what we want to do first is get our rotational compressor down. Now this guy needs a lot of speed a lot of speed right and i don't believe 128 will be enough however we'll try it will that be enough seems like that's enough okay so we can go ahead and grab this and bring it around like so and this will start to fill up with pressure ever so slowly it won't be very fast at the beginning but you can give this more rotational force let's see if we can bump it up to 152 yeah if i bump this up to 152 it will go at 12 16 and if we go back to 128 just to see what it was it's at 1024. So you can fiddle around with your rotational speed controller. It, it definitely needs a rotational speed controller, by the way. It can't otherwise produce energy. It needs to go really, really fast to produce pressure. However, you can fiddle around with your target speed just on the bottom here, and you'll be able to figure out how much air you can produce without all your machines breaking. 180 seems like a good number, so we'll go with that. And then this guy will have to charge up a lot of pressure before it can work. Okay, so a few fun things about pneumatic craft is there is a villager that is very very important to the mod and that is this guy right here the pneumatic craft mechanic and you can get access to him pretty early as soon as you get the reinforced stone you can make reinforced stone slabs which will allow you to make a charging station from pneumatic craft and this will be the villagers trading hall so if we grab ourselves some villages that we got in the earlier episode and we'll just set them up in our pneumatic craft section we'll grab some trap doors and some stone and just like so, we can get ourselves easy blocks of compressed iron. Now these require five invar ingots, or sorry, invar coins, thanks to the fact that we have a villager hat on. However, we can turn these guys to zombie villagers and get for one invar coin, we can get a full block of compressed iron. Now that's a very good deal. This guy doesn't want to turn, so we'll take this and place it back down. Come here, good sir. We'll do that again. He might turn eventually. We'll see. We'll wait on him. However, this guy here will trade us one compressed iron block for five invar our coins however i do want to turn him into a zombie villager so i'm going to go ahead and lock that trade and stick a zombie beside him and hopefully we with the tablet of restoration from ars magica ars nouveau sorry the tablet of restoration will heal zombie villagers and the discounts will be great so we'll go ahead and grab ourselves a ritual brazier as well and I might have a sorcerer in here. If not, I'll go pick one up from the mob farm. No, unfortunately, I do not. So we'll grab ourselves our villager. We'll lock the trade first, just so we don't lose the trade. So we'll grab some invar coins, and we will get ourselves our first block of compressed iron. And we'll lock him in there. He should level up. Mind you, the level ups, I don't believe, are that useful on these guys. However, we'll see in just a second here. He gives us transistors and capacitors. Now, if you've never used pneumatic craft before, these are two very, very important things. Now, they're not very expensive. If we go over here and look them up, they're not the most expensive 
good things to make. However, being able to get them from a villager is super useful. They're just latex, slime, and gold nuggets. However, these are used in the crafting for PCVs, so that's going to be very useful. Now, this guy converted, and we got the exact other trade we wanted, which is the PCP blueprint. Super, super useful. We're going to need this later down the line in the Minecraft as well. So you really want to get yourself set up with at least one or two villagers, and that will give you access to blocks of compressed iron, transistors, capacitors, as well as PCB blueprints. Now, the later on trades of these guys aren't very useful to this pack specifically. They will give you access to things like drones and a few other things for late game pneumaticraft. They're not necessary things, however, they're still useful if you want to use them. But for our intents and purposes, we only want compressed iron, transistors, capacitors, and PCB blueprints. So, like I said, we're gonna go ahead and turn these guys into zombie villagers. We'll lock you as well, and we're gonna trade them. We're gonna turn them into zombie villagers. A few episodes back, our poor zombie or strange wizard here got turned into a zombie because I had this area of our base unlit. So, luckily, what we can use him for is turning our current villagers into zombie villagers. All of these guys are now turned. We can come over here with the ritual brazier. We'll grab ourselves a source jar. I don't believe it's necessary. However, oh, you know, we didn't plan that one through, did we? Okay, come on guys, let's go back in our hole. In we go. Yep, there we go. Okay, we'll build this up one more because I didn't really plan that one through. And we'll grab the source jar, like I said, and we'll do something like that. And this should, in theory, turn them all back into regular villagers. And we have all of our friends back home and healthy. So we'll go ahead and pick them all up. And if we actually look at this guy, right? One invar coin for a block of compressed iron. Same with this guy. One block of iron or block one coin for a block of iron, one coin for transistors and capacitors. So we're set. Like we don't have to ever worry about making it in our pressure chamber as pressure at the moment isn't the most reliable. Later on, it will be fine. However, early game, these two villagers here are lifesavers. So we're going to go ahead and grab as much as we can from you. And hopefully we have a wandering trader on our island so we can trade in our invar. I'm not sure if we do though. Maybe not. Well, we'll once another wandering trader spawns, we'll go ahead and trade some more invar and get some more compressed iron from the villagers. The first thing I want to go ahead and do with our compressed iron is actually make a bunch of plates. So the reason we went ahead and made ourselves a bunch of compressed iron plates is the fact that we want to get into better forge energy generation today as well as a storage controller from functional storage. Both of these require iron sheets. So to make an iron sheet, you need to energize a iron plate or compressed iron plate, sorry. Now, how do you get energy? Well, for now, what we're going to do is use the power from our reaper generator to power this. So I'm going to go ahead and disconnect this guy. I don't believe I can, should I do it without the configurator? No, I can't. Well, we'll go ahead and dis uh, disconnect this guy. So our basic energy cube fills up and we'll use this as a temporary battery to power our machine. However, what we're going to do later in the episode is we want to get ourselves a generator from Create New Age. Now these guys are really cool. What they'll do is they'll convert rotational force into power by spinning very fast around magnets. And these magnets are upgradable through the tiers. So in the powering up quest down here, this is the first quest. You have to make eight magnets. They'll give you four in return. These can be 12 per generator coil and a carbon brush. Now, each magnet can be upgraded tier by tier to, until you eventually get to netherite magnets, which will give you a very, very powerful energy source later in the game. However, we're going to start with the measly magnetite blocks, and these guys also require overcharged iron. So we're going to wait for our energy cube to fill up, and then we'll come over here and set up a energizer. Okay, we've collected ourselves a decent amount of power. However, I did make a few changes over here, as I do want a generator running this way, which will give it enough blocks, right? So we have a three and two up on each side. It'll be a little tight. However, I do want it running here. So I went ahead and moved our pressure chamber down. And I also crafted myself a pressure tube. All you need is a pressure gauge, two levers, a pressure tube. And the pressure gauge is just gold plates surrounding the compressed iron plate we went ahead and made. Now, what this guy will do is once this guy reaches 4.9 bars of pressure, it will release gas and now click this little lever and little gas will spread out. That is so this guy will never explode because if this guy gets overpressured, 
or this guy gets overpressured. See how it says 0.29 out of 5 bars? If it goes over that limit, it will start to blow up and because it's, there's too much pressure being built up. So these guys are now controlled minimally. However, in later in Pneumatic Craft, we'll be able to control those a lot better. Also, we got a Luffy just now. Drop some Andesite Alloy. That's pretty cool. What we want to do next is grab our basic energy cube, come over to our basic energizer, which we just made. It is a Andesite casing and a lightning rod. Okay, so now that we have our energy cube on top of our energizer, it starts to fill up with power and we're giving it 720 stress units. So these should go decently fast and we want eight magnetite blocks and we'll get four from the quest. So we'll have the 12 and then we want 12 on top of that. So we want 20 magnetite blocks and we also do want one overcharged iron ingot so we want 12 uh 20 iron iron and one ingot so we'll throw one of these guys in here and then we'll throw 20 for now we'll do more later however i don't have much energy and if we watch this guy it will just slowly fill them up with energy with a big beam and then they'll come out this side with overcharged iron and overcharged iron sheets so what we do while we wait on these I'm actually just going to throw in 12 more because it can't hurt and why not throw in an extra 12 as well. So the first thing I actually want to go ahead and do while those overcharged iron ingots are cooking is make myself a storage controller. Now this will allow us to actually organize and sort everything we get from sifting over here as we're going to hook up our sifters to our power source any minute now. However, I don't want to do that before I have a proper storage system and that's what this wall is going to be over here. Now. How would I go about doing that? Well, I need a storage controller to begin with. We have everything to make it, except steel gears. Steel gears are made in a mechanical crafter. If I place a button right beside and click it and give it a redstone signal, then we'll get our steel gears. So we'll go ahead and do that two times, like so. Press our button and we'll get another steel gear. Now we can make ourselves our storage controller. Now this will allow us many opportunities. Oh, we need other stone slabs. There we go. Awesome. And you also get a linking tool for completing this quest, so you don't actually have to go ahead and make one. They're not too expensive, it's just diamond and a bit gold. However, it is nice that you get one. So what we want to do is we want to set up a transfer system between these guys over here and a storage controller over here. Now the best way to do that is actually by using controller extensions. Now these guys basically will work in a radius around the storage controller and act as storage controllers themselves. So they will input items into your storage just like your storage controller would. Okay, I've gone ahead and prepped a little section over here. So I placed the controller extensions we just made underneath the sifters with some item, tra item transporters. So these will pull out of the sifters into the controller extensions. And then over here, we have a storage controller that will link up to those. And here we're going to place our drawers. Now, I don't want any regular drawers. I know we're using oak drawers here. I will replace them eventually. However, those are a lot of items and I don't feel like moving them at the moment, but I'm going to use myself some framed drawers. Now, framed drawers are really easy to make. All it is is iron nuggets surrounding a trap chest or a chest of any kind. And then you can also make the other ones very easily. You can make the two by twos with four chests in the iron ingots. You can make the same ones here. And you can also make the compact drawers, right? So very simple to make. Now, how you go about doing it is inside a crafting window, place the block you want in the first slot. So this will be the outside. And then in the inside, you place the second block. So as you see here, we have a gray outside with gray concrete in a white inside. Now I only have 22 items or sorry, 23 items that I actually need from what we're about to do, which is making the mana steel sieves. So these guys here, is what we're going to upgrade next and that is just with making mana steel which we'll get to however with mana steel sieves i went ahead and counted out with dust we get eight items with sand we get five and then with gravel we get another 10. so that is 23 items so we're going to set 23 drawers later on this will get a lot a lot bigger and we'll have more items to place but for now what we want to do is we want to link all of these drawers up to this guy here so we're going to shift right click so the controller is now configured to that tool and if we swap to multiple mode we can go ahead and link all of these drawers to this controller now what we want to do is we want to link these all to the controller as well all right now to get started with making mana steel it is very simple we set up most of the process last episode all we need to do is convert our drenched steel that we made into magically inclined steel and then just toss that into a mana pool so we did 95 percent of the work last episode all we have to do is make the recipe and that's just one of each essence 
and I'll take my temporal pouch and just shift right click to 8x speed. These will complete very, very fast and is using the source around, so it's perfect. And in no time, look at that, all of our prismarine steel, or sorry, all of our Magiclean kind steel is finished. So we can come over here to our mana pools, which are pretty full up, by the way. 80, 890,000 mana in each pool. And oh, we're, we're out of cakes, to be fair. So we'll just go ahead and toss that in and get 32 mana steel ingots. Now, like I said, we got mana steel previously, so there's no quest for that guy. However, if we come over here, we're going to make ourselves some treated sticks, and we need some more. So if we have creosote in here, and we do not, I do have creosote over from making cold coke, however. And I just want to go ahead and make a bunch of treated wood, throw it back in. And what I really, really like about Ars Nouveau's crafting terminal here, normally in a lot of systems, this will fill with an empty bucket when you right click, right? Or sorry, when you take out this item. However, it will notice that it has to replace it with a crystal bucket and it will completely replace it until it's empty. So that, that's just really like a really cool like quality of life thing that the pack does have. However, we want to make ourselves three mana steel sieves and we can just place these on here and these guys will make us plenty of items. So what I want to go do is I want to connect this to our power source and how we're going to do that is probably just some cogs and run it parallel to back here so I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. Okay so I got this all set up. I was having a little difficulties with the item transporters from Industrial Foregoing. They just weren't moving from the sifter into the controller extension. I know these will move into chests so I'm not entirely sure why it wasn't working. However, I went ahead and crafted some omnidirectional hoppers from the Metacraft, which we can make now. So it's just compressed iron plates and a chest. Now, the reason I'm not just using the regular hoppers, as this is a perfectly normal direction, is the fact that these can be sped up later down the line with speed upgrades. And speed upgrades aren't too hard to make, by the way. It is just lapis lazuli and some glycerol, I believe. I might be incorrect. Oh, it's silicon as well. However, we we are getting Certus Quartz dust from sand now, or dust now, sorry. So we will be able to make that. And we're just going to go ahead and lock those drawers. And I kind of organize them in a way that makes sense. I put all of our ores together down here. All the dusts in the middle. Cinnabar and Appetite didn't really fit. All of our nutritional things in the corner, I guess. Whatever that means. And then bone meal. I think this looks really nice. And yeah. Oh, now we have automatic sifting and if you remember it is just netherite hammers and gold generator or gold cobble generators and yeah now we have fully automatic ores and we never ever have to make primitive slurry again another thing you might have noticed is i have my pressure mechanics here in my inventory now the reason i did this is because we can actually go ahead and make ourselves the traders now so like i said we can go ahead and place our traders down just like so and we'll keep them close by and each one of these guys can have their own little home now and now the guy can't roam around and they take up a lot less space super nice now the next project for today is getting our generator done so we can go ahead and remove all of these guys from our quest we don't need any of them anymore we just want to focus on this now the generator coil super easy carbon brush is also really easy the magnetite block not as easy however if you remember we did go ahead and make all the magical iron or the overcharged iron sorry and it didn't use too much of our energy cube actually so we could make some more if we wanted to however if we go ahead and make all the magnetite blocks we're out of deep slate <laughs> unfortunate so what we're going to have to do is actually make another material generator so before I go ahead and do anything else, I just want to show you guys this for anyone else who has looted villages or the likes of other dungeons and buildings. You can remove enchantments from tools very easily. So this axe here has auto smelt. Now, like I said, we could use our infuser over there with the fire to get auto smelt on a pickaxe for the deep slate. However, I want to show this off. So if you toss a book or number of books, depending on how many enchants it has, put in the block of obsidian below the items and the books and place an anvil on top, what happens is it splits the enchantments off. So now you have an auto smell book and a regular axe. So if I go grab a pickaxe of any kind, I don't know, this Aesnium pickaxe right here has unbreaking and soul bound. It doesn't really matter what they have and we'll place auto smelt on it. Now we have that for our material generator. What I'm going to do is just place it into the wall here because we have everything else here, right? So may as well fill this wall up with material generated things. So we'll go and place one of our pedestals here, exporting the offhand, and then we'll place our deep slate just behind it, pedestal, offhand, tool, oh, wrong thing on the offhand, and place it in there. And then we'll go ahead and link it up. So remember, shift right click here, shift right click there, 
and we'll start getting Deep Slate and it is soul bound or not soul bound, auto smelted. <laughs> So while our deep slate cooks away, which will be a while, however, it will get there eventually, we're going to go ahead and make ourselves the other two pieces of the puzzle. Now these are really easy. All I need is some coal, and I'll grab myself some andesite alloy, just in case I don't have enough. And these guys should be super easy to make. So we'll make one carbon brush, all you need, and we'll make ourselves, how many coils are we making? How much overcharged iron did I make? 42, and we're getting, that's not how math works, because we're only getting four we're getting yeah we're getting four i need some more overcharged iron okay so i thought i misclicked earlier so i went ahead and made myself two extra overcharged iron however i forgot i already made two magnetite blocks so i calculated right in the beginning right we're gonna make a four long tunnel which means we need four generative coils so that's pretty easy to make we'll make four andesite blocks and then we should have enough copper yeah we do oh just enough copper Thank goodness. And we'll make four generator coils. And once our deep slate is done smelting, which it will be eventually, we'll go ahead and lock that. We can make ourselves enough magnetite blocks. All right, that should be enough deep slate now made up. So we should be able to craft 44 magnetite blocks total in a second here. 46. How did I miscalculate? Oh, right. I made two extra. I did make the two extra that I didn't need. However, now if we go ahead and turn the quest in, we'll get ourselves some MV wire connectors and relays, insulated MV wires, and the four extra magnetite blocks and a rotation speed controller. Now these are useful, however, they're garbage. We don't want them. We can make ourselves HV right away. And HV just requires a bit of steel, aluminum, and more aluminum, and then over here it requires slight glass. Okay, now with our magnetite blocks, we're gonna come over here. We're going to make a dent in the middle right here to put a gearbox down. Those diesel generators are kind of loud, aren't they? And we'll put a gearbox like so. Nope, that's not quite right. Like so. We'll run a shaft up the middle. And then we'll do another vertical gearbox like, no, like this. There we go. And then we can take a shaft out the middle right here. And that will be the rotation for our power. And our power source itself will come out this side. So what I want to do is I want to run this four deep further down than I have to. So the first block would normally be here. So we're going to count four out and then we'll start it because these guys can actually be eight long. However, we only do have the four blocks for now or the four length for now. So we're going to only make it four long. However, in the future, we're going to expand backwards as well. And I do keep running out of flight on this side of my base, which is quite annoying. So I do really need to make another flight ritual we'll probably do that next episode and get ourselves relays around the entire base so we never run out of source <laughs> we're gonna bring our shaft forward for now and we can place each one of our generator coils in the middle like so and our system did overstress unfortunately so we're gonna go ahead and turn this guy down to about 158 nope that's not quite Let's go 142. Wow, a good old 142 works. I could probably fine tune it just a bit to go up. Oh, is that the... I'm concerned for that bead's well-being. But that isn't fire, that is water right there. So hopefully he's all right. Now, what we're going to do is place our carbon brush on the front here. And this guy will start generating energy. So currently we're generating 1.1 thousand Fe for energy or RF per tick. And it can hold an internal buffer of 21.9 or basically 22,000 forge energy. This, and you can also take rotational force off of this, by the way. So if you want to continue rotational force this way, you can write off that. However, if you connect an HV wire relay on the top here, which we'll do in just a second, we can actually grab power off of this and bring it throughout our entire base. Now that's going to be super useful for upcoming episodes because we're going to get into power. All right, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. It was a bit on the shorter side. However, we did get a lot done today. We got all of our sieving done. So we have automatic sievings with Man of Steel. We got our basic power generation set up. And we got Pneumatic Craft, the basic setup as well. So if you guys did enjoy this episode, leave a like down below. If you learned something or you would like to teach me something, leave a comment down below. And if you don't want to miss any future uploads, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.